Albert Einstein once said, all that is valuable in human society depends upon the opportunity for development accorded to an individual. Going by that saying, I am proud to say that the last five years of my government has been golden age of opportunities, age where dreams came true age that propelled Kerala towards fast trajectory of growth and development, an age which has opened several doors that is going to bring in more and more opportunities for a holistic development of the people of Kerala. This, in fact, has been the vision of the government from day one when we declared that development with care will be the government's motto, which has been guiding us to achieve so many feats during our tenure. It can be said with pride that my government has ensured the realization of some of the major infrastructure projects of Kerala. First among them would be the rupees 5,181 crore Kochi metro rail project from Aluwa to Peta, the first phase of which will be over by June 2016. Test run was successfully completed on 23rd January 2016. This project will ensure an eco-friendly and a public-friendly transportation that is going to serve 4.12 lakh people in 2017 5.19 lakh people in 2021, 7.57 lakh people in 2031. Not stopping with Kochi, my government has also signed an agreement with DMRC for the proposed light metro rail project at Kolikod and Tiruvanandaburam for an estimated amount of rupees 6,728 crore. 70% of work on runway and 55% of the terminal building of Kannur International Airport has been completed. I have great pleasure to inform this August House that the test leading uh, landing will test landing will take place in this month. When it becomes commercially operational in September 2016, it will make up proud Kerala, the only state in the country with four international airports. Kochi Smart City spread over 246 acres with the completion of 1.65 lakh square feet of building work is about to inaugurate its first phase on February 20th, 2016. The Smart City is going to generate job opportunities for around 5,500 knowledge-based professionals in its first IT building. The investment for the first phase is around 300 crore, split between Smart City Kochi's waterfront IT building and the supporting infrastructure, which comprises of 3.5 kilometers of road bridge, substation, etc. The second phase of phase comprising of seven IT buildings with a built-up area of 47 lakh square feet and an international school for 3,400 students will incur an investment of rupees 1,900 crores entirely upon completion. 
The second phase will create additional 90,000 direct jobs and is said to transform the IT phase of Kerala. The visionary approach of my government has led to the declaration of first ever startup policy in India, namely the Kerala Technology Startup Policy in 2015. This has boosted tremendous momentum in creating <coughs> a conducive atmosphere for our startup startups to succeed. So far, 405 startups have been incubated in the startup village at Kochi. This has become such great role, role model that the entire country is following this success story. Young Entrepreneurship Summit was held to assist the youth with innovative industrial ventures to become young entrepreneurs and the V machine meet was held for the first time in India for women entrepreneurs. Angel Fund was formed to create initial capital and seed fund to give additional assistance to young entrepreneurs. Incubation centers were formed in colleges to realize the business concepts of students. For encouraging young entrepreneurs, Kerala State Entrepreneur Development Mission was formed. Adding to the list of firsts that my government has achieved, I am once again proud to say that Kerala has the first digital state in India. The state has achieved 100% mobile density, 75% e-literacy, highest Aadhaar enrollment of 99%, highest digital banking rate, and high-speed broadband connection using fiber optic cable up to panchayat level. E-governance initiatives have been implemented for establishing better service delivery mechanisms to improve its internal working efficiency and bring to more trust in government function. With more than 2,300 Akshaya centers in 978 panchayats, Akshaya centers are taking e-governance to the citizens' doorstep. E-district services are available across 14 districts spanning 1,700 village and taluk offices from 26th March 2013. Currently, 24 certificate services mainly from revenue department and 500 utility come fee payment services of Government of Kerala can be availed online. Government of Kerala had also launched online RTI and public grievance services. More than 1.8 crores certificates have been issued, which makes Kerala the leading state in terms of transactions. E-Office is replacing the existing manual handling of files and documents with an efficient electronic system. Around 27 secretariat departments have been covered, including the Chief Minister's Office and Chief Secretary's Office. IT sector in Kerala has grown to the extent of direct employment to 1 lakh persons and income generation of rupees 15,000 from IT exports. It was just 3,000 crores worth IT exports when UDF government came to power in 2011. With the commissioning of phase one of smart city and cyber park, IT exports from Kerala would reach rupees 18,000 crores in 2016 and would provide two lakh direct employment. My government also saw the development of a new software to smoothen government-to-government -government coordination, namely action, 
that connects all department secretaries and chief secretary online. Action would keep top officials informed about obstacles and challenges in a real-time manner. Kerala used to be one of the largest maritime hubs of international trade a few hundred years back. The Willingium International Seaport will bring back Kerala into its rightful position in international trade once again. Work has already begun on the country's only deep-sea multi-purpose container transshipment port. The rupees 7,525 crore project will be completed in 1,000 days. On completion, the port situated 10 nautical miles from international shipping channel will be able to hand, handle container ships of 18,020 foot equivalent unit, which will save billions of rupees in foreign exchange and also have a cascading effect on the state's economy. It will not be an exaggeration to say thus that this port is going to re-establish India's strategic supremacy in Indian Ocean. Undoubtedly, such a thrust given by my government in such development projects has been, projects has been instrumental in recording a very high growth rate. Most of the time during the five-year period, Kerala has maintained an economic growth higher than the national average. For instance, Kerala registered a growth rate of 12.3% compared to the national growth rate of 10.50% in the year 2014-15 based on current price. The commendable job done by my government is recognized not only by our beloved people of Kerala, but also by various national and international fora. For example, the most popular Jan Samkar, uh, Samparka Paribadi of the Chief Minister received the UN Award for Public Service in 2013. It was for the first time that a chief minister in the country was selected for this prestigious award. Chief Minister's website received Web Ratna Award. Some of the other awards are the IBN 7 Diamond State Award for performance in the fields of education, health, environment, and poverty alleviation. India Today State of the uh, States Award in 2013 for achieving outstanding growth in the field of education, macroeconomics, agriculture, consumer market, and investment. First prize of the Union Government in 2014 for its performance in decentralization of power and empowerment of democracy and uh, Ulysses, Ulysses Prize, known as the Oscar in Tourism Sector for the Responsible Tourism Project implemented at Kumarakom. The publicity even run Kerala run, a mass run for national games, witnessed the participation of 1.52 crore people and earned a place in Limca Book of World Records. Kerala has continuously received the Energy Award from 2012 instituted by the Ministry of Power. Kerala has also received the India Power Award 2014 and the Award of Ministry of Power in 2015 for implementing most number of projects. During my government's tenure, 5.8 lakh poverty-stricken families were given rice up to 30 kg at the rate of rupees 1 a kilo and 14.4 BPL families were given uh, wheat at the rate of rupees 2 a kilo and up to 25 
kilo rice at the rate of rupee one a kilo, about 94 lakh people were benefited. 60 lakh more people were included in the rupees one a kilo rice scheme and subsidy of rupees 2,870 crores was sanctioned for supply of rice and wheat at low rates. We also conducted special fairs for arresting the undue rise in prices in the open market during festival seasons like Onam, Ramzan, Vizu, Christmas, etc. <coughs> and also medicines through 102 medical stores and five wholesale depots. The total sales turnover of Supplyco has increased from 2,320 crores during the year 2010-11 to 3,792 crores during the year 2014 and 15. My government will implement National Food Security Act 2013 from 1st April 2016. We propose to open supply co outlets in all Gram Panchayat by financial year 2016-17. Till January 31st, 2016, my government has dispersed rupees 710 crore through Chief Minister's Distress Relief Fund and rupees 6.27 more, uh, 6.27 crores dispersed to people outside Kerala. In three, in the three editions of Chief Minister's Mass Contact Program, a total of 7.89 lakh petitions were resolved out of total of 12.5 lakh. In 2011, out of 5.45 lakh petitions, 2.97 lakh were resolved. In 2013, out of 3.21 lakh petitions, 3.20 lakh lakhs were resolved. And in 2015, out of 3.83 lakh petitions, 1.72 lakh were resolved. It is a matter of pride for Kerala that CIAL has become the first airport in the world to totally run on solar power. Work on the new rupees 1000 crore international terminal has begun. It has registered a record increase in terms of passengers and cargo. Not being complacent with 100% literacy rate, my government has, has a vision for excellence in education. Various efforts of my government to realize that vision has created many fuss in the education sector. For instance, for the first time in the history of Kerala, 22 arts and science colleges were started in the government sector. 320 courses were also sanctioned in government-aided colleges. Also, the first Indian Institute of Technology will come up in an area of 400 acres at Kanji Code in Palkhad. After 35 years, the number of government medical colleges in the state has risen from five to nine and six are on the avail. Total number of MBBS seats has risen from 900 to 1,250. For the first time in the country, a medical college was started under the Department of Scheduled Cost in Palkad in 2014-15. Of the total admissions, 70% is reserved for scheduled cost students and 2% for students belonging to scheduled tribes. The school education sector in Kerala has witnessed phenomenal changes both in the field of academic as well as the infrastructural aspects during my government. 
a number of schools in the state has undergone major changes in terms of infrastructure facilities by providing funds for the purpose from Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan and Rashtriya Madhyamik Shiksha Abhiyan in addition to the plan fund. Textbooks from standard 1 to 10 have been revised after a long gap of 10 years. 62 government higher secondary schools and 167 aided higher secondary schools were sanctioned. Aided status has been given to special schools that are having strength of more than 100 students, including Butts School. In principle, approval has been, has been given for granting aided status to special schools having strength of more than 50 students. The new teachers package of my government will benefit 17,000 recognized aided teachers serving in regular posts till March 31st, 2015. True to the commitment of my government to the welfare of the people of Kerala, seven revolutionary policy interventions have been achieved in social welfare sector, namely Kerala State Policy for Persons with Disabilities, Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment Policy under which a gender budgeting and mainstreaming tool, namely State Gender Action Plan for Financial Year 2016-17 will be developed that will ensure more efficient and coordinated utilization of existing allocations for women's empowerment with a focus on gender equality. The third revolutionary policy is the transgender policy under which a pilot action has been prepared to establish an institutional system for self-identification of transgenders and for their overall protection and dignity. A child policy was declared in 2016, which will focus on four core, four core areas, namely protection from abuse, exploitation and neglect, right to survival and basic needs, development rights and right to participation. Apart from the above, we have come up with a comprehensive old age policy, nutrition policy and NGO policy that will enable meaningful contribution from NGOs in this sector. Various innovations have been done to improve service delivery and better documentation and tracking. For example, the department has developed social audit manual, a protocol for prevention of child abuse, standards of care for shelter homes, standard operating procedure for child welfare committees for missing children, among many others.